Matthew 5, verses 13 and 20. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It's no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under a bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all the house. In the same way, let your sh light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to the Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Please be seated. Let us pray. O oh God, of all the words spoken this day, may it be your living word that remains. Give us the grace to receive it and the charity to let all the other words slip away. Amen. This last week, I had um, an object lesson in trying to understand the difference between motives and intentions. I had the opportunity for the first time in quite a long time to uh, have my granddaughters with me uh, where I live, to keep them. Their parents really needed a sitter really badly, so the answer, as you know, grandparents, is always yes. So I have two granddaughters. Olivia is five and, I mean, uh, uh, Mia is five and Olivia will be three in June. And they were romping and roaming all over the place. And uh, beside my chair, there's a table like most people have. And like most men, uh, on our table beside our chair is a remote and collected things that we're going to deal with it. We're going to deal with it. We just haven't yet. That's where it stays until we deal with it. And beside that table is a guitar that I have because you never know when the urge arises that you need to play a thing. And so on my table is a guitar pick that looks like this. Don Wood had these made some time ago. It's, it's of our heart logo. It's our heart butterfly, you know, that sometimes hangs up here. <clears throat> and when he first said, this looks like a guitar pick to me, if I got some made, would you would you have any use for them? And the answer was yes. So my two-year-old, Olivia, who was fascinated by the chains on the lamp, pull, turning it off and on, turning it off and on, I said, baby girl, that's enough. She sees a guitar pick, and she picks it up, and she looks at it, and she says, a heart. I said, yeah, it's a heart. And she pulled up her shirt and she put the heart on hers and she said, Jay, your heart is safe now. That child has no idea what that meant. And I have no idea quite what her intentions or motives were. <clears throat> But about 15 minutes later, when she said, more ice cream, Jay? I said, absolutely, baby, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> you 
Any of us who've done any work in recovery know what setting an intention is. To set an intention for the day is that thing that you do that will at least stretch across a day to keep you into a space of clarity and focus so that all the other things that have confused and muddied the waters of life don't invade. Hadn't dealt with them all yet, but they don't invade. To set an intention so that today I am not going to drink. Today I am going to do something that pushes me toward a life of clarity and sobriety. An expressed thing. Sometimes the intention is my intention is for today not to stink as badly as yesterday. That's a good intention. I wouldn't have said stink. I would have said another word. And half before. Intentions stretched across a day, um, which is what it means, right? Dawn, yes, I got it. Um, is to to hold a space for a day for life to be at least a bit clearer than maybe it was the day before. Interestingly enough, if you look in the dictionary for intention, one of the definitions is medical in nature. That an intention is a healing process for a wound. Hmm, how about that? Intentions are those things that we cast upon ourselves across a day or across a season of life to move us from the space that we are in toward a place that we hope to be. Motives, by comparison, at least as I would understand it, is more what is the inducement that prompts an action? What is the thing in me that motivates, moves me, and acts something of me and to what end might it come forward. In our readings for this morning, I think we have a study in intentions and motives. The prophet is telling the story of the people who have been doing all of these religious things and are not seeming to get noticed by God. We worship, we fast, we do all this stuff. Do you not see? What is the reason for doing religious things? It's a fundamental question <clears throat> for any of us who practice faith. So much of how religiosity is practiced is transactional. I do a thing so that I might get a reward. But is that really the reason God wants us to do a thing? Does God want us to be loving and caring so that we glean the fruit of that for ourselves? Or does God want us to be loving and caring because in the act of being loving and caring, we are demonstrating the character of God? Does God want of us to demonstrate manifestly hospitality and welcome of all, not regardless of who they are, but precisely because of who they are, so that we might get notoriety or a pat on the back or derision, depending upon who's asserting the claim, or is it because radical hospitality that welcomes everyone, not regardless of who they are, but precisely because of who they are, is indicative of the character of God? I'm pretty clear in my heart which of those two it is. The people to whom the prophet was spe were speaking or speaking about was this this torn place between we do religious things, but we're not seeing the product of it. We're not getting ours. What does that mean? It is fundamentally a question, I think, for any of us. What is the reason you practice your faith? What are your intentions? 
cast across a day? Is it to be closer to God through a day than you are now? Or is your motive that moves you to action to do a thing so that you can get noticed, so that you can get a pat on the back, so that you can get a reward, so that you can go to heaven, whatever the thing is? Do you see the difference? Every Sunday in this place, we practice one of the sacraments of the church. Sacrament defined by Jim White's standard text on this, a sacrament is evidence of God's self-giving. That's how you can define what a sacrament is. And so we're going to do a thing here in a minute. You're going to be invited to come, not because of who you are, but because of who God is. And you're going to confess. You're going to confess your sin. And yeah, I know it's printed for you in the bulletin, but there's space for you to offer up your own stuff. And why do we do that? Because to be fully available to receive the grace that's going to be freely given to you we got to remove all the impediments in the way, all the roadblocks, so that we can be open and receptive to that which God is offering. And then we're going to share the peace with each other. Why? Because how in the world can we come together at the table of the Lord if we're not at peace with one another? Do you see how that's counterintuitive? And then we're going to have... This prayer, and it'll be the brief version of the prayer because Lord knows we don't want to keep you in church too late today. But it's going to tell the mighty works of God across all of creation, even into this very moment, and for the life and the presence and the gift and the ministry of Jesus and what it does and what it did and what it's doing. And we're going to announce the great mystery of faith, which is Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. So we're going to do all of that and we're going to invoke the presence of the Holy Spirit to be on us and on these gifts. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ so that we may be for the what? The world. The body of Christ redeemed by His blood. It's not so that you can get extra blessing today. It's so that you can now set your intention toward living a life pursuing the very justice of God that he calls forth in the fast in this reading. And then we're going to share the sacrament. We're going to put the table all back together and folks are going to be ready to go and they're saying, I don't know that last hymn, but you know, all the things that you all do, I know what y'all do, I watch, I got it, I know what happens. I think, do you know this last one? You might. Anyway. But we're not done. We're not done. The prayer we pray after receiving communion is as critical as me saying the Lord be with you and also with you and we start the prayer. It is the intention we set going forward from this place to live out the sacramental life. What is a sacrament? Evidence of God's self-giving. If we've now participated in that, we are taking upon ourselves the sacramental life. We give of ourselves. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which, we have, uh, which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to do what? Give ourselves for others. Give ourselves for others. We've done a holy thing, but it's not until we set our intention about what having done that thing is going to do in our lives that it's lived out. It takes root. It stretches out across our day. I am going to seek to live as I live for God by giving myself for others. And when you do that, when we're able to do that faithfully and well, life gets a whole lot more salty. And light shines a bit brighter. And you don't want to put it out. You can't, really. And it's not your light. 
It's the light of God you now reflect upon a broken world. What are our motives? We can always question motives, but let us be clear about what our intentions are. Set an intention. My granddaughter's intention, whatever it was, the impact of it transformed a day for me. Jay, your heart's safe here now. And if you've not known where you're going or who you are or what's next, my Lord, is that ever a word of confirmation and care. So as you leave this place today, because I've not shared anything from him in a minute, thank God for the words of John O'Donohue. A blessing called, May the light of your soul guide you. Listen. May the light of your soul guide you. May the light of your soul bless the work you do with the secret love and warmth of your heart. May you see in what you do the beauty of your own soul. May the sacredness of your work bring healing, light, and renewal to those who work with you and to those who see and receive your work. May your work never weary you. May it release within you wellsprings of refreshment, inspiration, and excitement. May you be present in what you do. May you never become lost in bland absences. May the day never burden you. May dawn find you awake and alert, approaching your day with dreams, possibilities, and promises. May evening find you gracious and fulfilled. May you go into the night blessed, sheltered, and protected. May your soul calm, console, and renew you. That feels like a great intention to set, doesn't it? Let it be so. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.